Good morning, Nick from Meat Smoke Fire here, uh, back for our weekly live cook. Um, it's, well, until about 10 minutes ago, it was miserable, and now it's sunny and lovely. Uh, so, um, it is a bit breezy. Um, we haven't got a sock over the microphone, so apologies if it gets windy, but we've got a new phone, so we thought we'd try it without, see what happens. Um, so, today, usually, as usual, three different dishes. Um, and we're going comfort food today because it's cold, it's wet, it's miserable. Autumn's here, we changed the clocks, everyone's miserable. Well, I am. <laughs> but anyway, um, so um, yeah, we're going to do three dishes that all sort of tie together, hopefully. Um, so let me show you who's here. Apparently, for one week only. <gasps> no, no, she's just asked for a week off next week. I mean, how rude's that? Yeah, it's Andy yeah. or Andrea. Good morning. And. Over here with the RB75, 73 even, 73. kicking out some beautiful heat. Yep. Tucked under the pergola this time, not at the bar because it was raining. Oh, We've got Mama and Helena. <laughs> um, so let us know how we get on. Right, three dishes. Um, one is a bit, I mean, really strange. Uh, a guy called Reuben Clover gave me a monk jack deer. It's been a week of monk jack deer. Um, so Helena's boss hit a monk jack deer, my brother-in-law hit a monk jack deer and we got the monk jack deer out of the freezer. And then Mark from Smoke Fine Food cooked a venison casserole, exactly what we got planned for today. So it is pure chance that we're doing a recipe that is very similar to his, in fact I might just copy his. Um, but we've got, uh, we had some monk jack left over that um, Reuben gave us. Uh, which was very kind of him. He shoots, uh, shoots deer on people's farms when they're vermin. So this is a monk jack. So we're gonna do monk jack casserole. To go with it, we are gonna do some um, spicy beetroot, almost pickled, because we're gonna do them with some balsamic vinegar. Um, we're gonna cook them, they are delish. We've been doing them for years. Andrea's nodding her head. Yeah, they're nice. And we're also gonna do a dish that we tried once in the week. It was okay, we're trying it again. And we're gonna try two different techniques, pomana. So it is very slight, thinly sliced Charlotte potatoes, layered with a bit of butter, cooked in a pan or not, as the set case may be for the second one. Um, and we're gonna give that a spin. And we're also gonna cook the main dish on the Minimax. Um, which is a bit weird, using a technique I've never done before. I've not tried it. Let's hope it works. So let's start with the venison casserole. So we've got loads of lovely things here. I've got some, uh, we've already got one going by the way. Uh, so this, we're gonna make a little one. Um, the other one is going because it takes two and a half hours, but we can get it going. So we've got some cubed monk jack shoulder. Uh, we have some lardons or pancetta. This is uh, pancetta. We've got some celery, some carrots, some mushrooms, some onions, and a whole bunch of things. So let's just get going. So we're gonna get the lardons in first. I'm just gonna grab my oil and a spoon. Now this is a technique I haven't seen anyone use. So hopefully <laughs> it will work. We have got a Dutch oven directly on the charcoal. There is no cooking surface in here. If I get a pair of gloves, um, and it hasn't gone out yet, but this Dutch oven is just sitting on top of the charcoal. And it is still going underneath, so that's great. Now, temperature control might be a bit tricky, but we'll see how we go. So I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, oil in there, and then we'll get our lard ones in. Good sound. That's it's positive. It's crackle, it's gonna work. And we'll just give these a little spin in here. We're trying to get the, them to crisp up a little bit, get the fats to come out of them. Might be a bit hot, but we'll work it out. So we're gonna go in there with those. While those are doing, we're gonna get our monk jack ready. So over here, just got some plain flour, and I've got my monk jack, and I'm just gonna, I want to coat it. So you could do it by putting a little bit of plain flour onto your venison, or you can put your venison into a bit of plain flour Mix it up a little bit. You don't want it too coated. So when we've got a bit like that, we'll just put it on the side. And the flour is gonna help thicken our sauce as we cook it. So I'm just gonna put our monk jack up here and we'll cook that in a couple of batches. 
brown it off. Perfect. So who have we got on, Helena? Uh, Mark from Smoke Fine Food. Morning, Mark. Hope I do this justice. Uh, it's sort of your recipe, apart from we've got an addition. As we always do with Mark, um, I take his recipes and I change them. Come closer, Andy, to the screen. Uh, we've got Malloy's Craft Butchery on. Morning, Malloy's. We've got Let's Q on. We've Morning, got, Peter. Uh, He's on holiday. What are you doing? Coming on the cook. Uh, You're on holiday, got, Peter. Uh, I think it's Ian. Yes, Ian, who was here yesterday on the class. Yeah, um, Morning, Ian. Phil, uh, Phil Nurse. We've got Sarah Stoneham. We've got Andrew Green, who's in Turkey. And it's raining. Morning, Andrew. Morning, Phil. Morning, Sue. Dan. And, Morning, Dan. Uh, Ed Hunter. And wow, loads. Rocket Romeo. Who's Rocket Romeo? That's right. a great name. Uh, Stuart from Risky for Brisket. Cameron, Morning, Stuart. Darren. Um, Mick, wow. uh, Martin Hawkins, Jane, Morning, Martin. What's Martin? It's Ed. I thought Martin was at Santa Pod. I or thought Martin I... was watching West Ham the other day. Oh, yeah, am I getting thing. everyone mixed up? I Maybe. thought he was at the... Maybe I'm getting everyone mixed up. So our lardons are looking splendiferous, if that's the word. Right, I need my slots and spoon, which is behind us. Don't move, Andy. Sorry, Pete, it is really windy. Oh, it's raining in Portugal as well. Raining in Portugal, raining in Turkey. Cambridge is the place to be. Sunshine, beautifully warm. Mm -hmm. I'm Matt lying. Opinion. Yeah, so, right, we're going to go in with half of our venison. This is going to be a mini casserole. I'll give, when I um, give you the recipe, it will be for a full size one, but this is going to be a mini one. So, straight on the, straight in there. I'm going to put a tiny bit more oil in. I just want to brown it off and then we'll take it out. Lovely. Right, let that do. Anyone else? Any questions? <laughs> Martin was definitely in West Ham, not Centrepod. Who am I thinking? I don't know. I don't know. I'm getting everyone mixed up now. Oh, it's wet in Norfolk. Uh, Phil it's, Nurse said it was wet in Nottingham. It's only just dried up here, to be fair, and it does look like it might rain again. But no, we don't want to rain. I didn't bring the remote control outside for the, the roof, so they're going to get wet. Rude. <laughs> right, let's have a look at these, Andy. So we're just browning them off. Look at this for a technique. So, for those of you with a Mini Max, you can now cook on a Dutch oven in your Mini Max. It hasn't been possible until today because they didn't fit. Sunny and body. Helena's pulling face with oh, Sunny and body. Oh, sorry, say that again. You haven't been able to cook in a Dutch oven on the Mini Max because if you do it on a surface, you can't shut the lid. Oh, okay. So this is a new technique okay. um, by just putting the the, uh, the Dutch oven directly on the charcoal, it drops it down a bit so you get more space. Okay, so can we have a little bit of recap because we've got quite a new yes. followers join since you started. Right, so we are cooking a venison stew. The addition mark is dumplings. This is Mark, a bit like Mark Smoke, Smoke Fine Foods uh, venison uh, casserole that he did, he posted two days ago, after I'd already got the venison out of the freezer. Um, so how are there wasps? Anyway, um, so we're doing a venison, just gonna take these ones out for the next lot in, a venison stew, which takes two and a half hours, low and slow, once you've, uh, once you've uh, got it all put together. And so I've got one already going, so I'll show you how that looks. So I'm putting the second lot of venison in just to brown off. I'll put a bit more oil because it soaked that lot up. And we've got our Dutch oven directly on the coal. We are going to put with it some spicy beetroot. Um, I've already got some going because it takes about an hour to cook and we're going to do some pomana. Uh, and I've already got one of those going. Quick question. Yes. Uh, Andrew's asked, will the Dutch oven not get too hot direct on the coals? Not if you control the temperature. Oh, okay. It's not too hot. It's working. So watch might, this eh? space. Watch this space, yeah. Getting 110 might be difficult, but we'll see. So we'll just give those a zhuzh. I could obviously have done it on the large, but I thought we'd have a crack at something new, something we've never done. Right. Uh, let's do the, while that's do, um, doing that, we'll do the beetroot, because this is good fun. So. <laughs> We need a nice big bit of foil. 
because you probably can't hear me now because we're going to fold it in half. We're going to fold it in half again. And then we're going to roll up the edge that is open or the bottom that's open. And we're going to roll up one of the sides that's open. Like that. So effectively we've produced a waterproof packet that we can then open up like that and then we can load it with our chunks of beetroot so they're quartered or sixths pop those in this is so simple this is a bit of a cheat but we love it some chili flakes now go as spicy or as not spicy as you like so good amount of chili flakes in there so i've got a bit of a runny nose today anyway and then some balsamic vinegar over the top. So a good few tablespoons. Let's run out. All of the vault, that's right, I've got plenty. And then we're just gonna roll up the other end and seal it up. Now this will puff up as you cook it. And this is gonna take about an hour in an egg at 180 degrees. But all of that chili, all of that balsamic in there will infuse into the, into the um, Beetroot. Beetroot. And there's one that has puffed up. It's actually the popped or it's, le it's leaked a little bit. So I can see some, come, some coming out, but it'll be fine. And we're just going to leave those. So this is sitting about 180 degrees. We've got an indirect cook. So we've got the plate setter in there. Um, so using it as an oven, really. The egg isn't giving a lot to this, but if you've got other things cooking at 180, then just chuck them in next to it. Beautiful. Okay, I've got another question. Yes. Someone has said, are oh, the legs worth it? They always look so unstable. Love the legs. Take this off just in case, but they're pretty good. And I haven't even got the screw at the bottom because I've lost it. Um, there's a, usually a, 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 a nut that goes through there. I forgot to tighten it up, put it in the car and it shook itself loose and we've lost it. Um, but no, they're brilliant. I mean, it looks a little wobbly, but... Mine's grand. We, you, Andy's is grand. There Mine's you go. Grand. Andy has this set up at home. We've yep. got one here. We've got one over there. We've got one in the camper van. We love it. Right, let's get this. So I'm going to get those out. And now we need to saute our onions. So I'm going to put a bit more oil again. It will soak all of this up. Don't panic about this. Um, I'm actually going to cheat and do a whole load together. So. I've got some onions, I've got some garlic, so two cloves of garlic, and I've got some um, mushrooms. And I want to fry those down. I know Mark put some in at the end. Um, so, but I'm going to do that, and we're just going to fry those off. And they're not sticking, they're doing nicely. The flour didn't stick, the flour didn't burn. It's actually better on doing this than it is doing it inside. A little bit more oil just to stop them sticking so i'm going to give those a couple of minutes right pomana so pomana is potatoes that are layered and they're layered beautifully now um chef andy knight. andy knight sorry andy i couldn't remember um pointed out i needed to slice them thinner so off camera just in case I've sliced them thinner with my mandolin. So we've got a whole load of really sliced thin, wafer thin, ooh, 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 hold on. Yeah, about yeah. a millimetre thick, um, Charlotte potatoes. And what I'm gonna do, uh, normally you put them into a frying pan, uh, you then put a layer in, and the recipes I've read, you fr fry the bottom layer, then you put more layers in, uh, and you can do it, and then you put it in the oven. However, I'm gonna do them slightly differently. So I've got one ring here, I'm gonna do another ring here. Um, I found a use for the, um, I've done it before, but I found a use for the, the rain cap. Um, keeps your butter warm, stops it going solid when you're outside. Um, otherwise, as far as I'm concerned, completely pointless. Okay, can I ask another yep. question? Uh, do you use a full amount of charcoal in the Lumax with the Dutch oven in place? Yes. Yeah, so the Dutch oven is sitting on a normal layer of charcoal. If anything, I put a little bit extra in today. 
So we're going to take these. These have been sliced, washed, uh, and then dried. And so the idea is that you put them in so they're beautiful and they overlap each other and you go around in spirals. And you... This is going to be challenging for you. Oh, yeah. I'm not my idea of... <laughs> Yeah, I am not the prettiest chef. Now, once you've got a layer, then you put a bit of butter on. And then you put another layer. It's like watching paint dry this, isn't it? <laughs> now, you're supposed to make it look really pretty. Um, the idea is that it squashes down and you get these lovely, crispy, and hopefully that's what's going on in our egg behind me, because I've already got one on. Um, these lovely, crispy, little... Um, Uh, You're not piles. doing too bad, actually. No, in not, fairness, yeah. yeah. Someone with I such get, mahusive hands. You're doing quite <laughs> a delicate job. I did get pulled up by Andy, and on the wasn't layered very well. They weren't, you know. But uh, good on him. I mean, it's what we like. Feedback's great. So, um, thank you, Andy. Is he on? Uh, I haven't seen him. So know. I'm going to push these down a bit. Now I've got them. <laughs> I'm cheating here, sort of. I've got these little cast iron rings. Um, so I put. we thought we'd have a go at making them inside that, just on a bit of um, parchment. And then I'm going to put them onto the baking stone. So on the egg behind me, I've got it set up, indirect cook. Um, I'll need one in the middle. Uh, indirect cook uh, with the pizza stone on uh, for this one. And I'm going to try and cook these directly on the pizza stone. That's just a log in the fire. Is that keeping you warm, Mama? Yes. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so, uh, I've got a couple of late apologies for late arrivals. Oh, Alex Pemberton. You don't have to apologise. Oh, no, Morning, Alex. It was good to see you here a yeah. few weeks ago. Uh, By so, the way, this is clarified butter, oh. and I've just got some garlic in it. Um, you don't normally make it with garlic, but I'll put a bit of garlic in it. I know I have forgotten my salt. Oh, okay. But I'll send you in a minute. Go on, then do your bit. Do the introduction. I don't need it now. Okay. I don't. She's gone. Now we won't get the story about Alex being late or... Yeah, no, we yeah, will. We'll get that in a minute. She's run off because I've left the salt inside. So here we go. Right. So these two, I'm filling them up, pushing them down. A little bit of oil, uh, butter. They're not the prettiest by me. But they'll be good. Now it's not tarty flat. I know people have asked for tarty flat. I think we'll have a go at one of those in a couple of weeks. Not a couple of weeks, it won't be because... Two weeks time we're doing the Christmas. So we will do a full Christmas dinner on the 13th, I think it is. Um, so it's in time for Thanksgiving, not 4th of July as I said last week. <laughs> <laughs> Random. Yeah, it's just me. So we'll do, uh, do it then. Uh, so we'll do some stuffing, we're gonna do a turkey, we'll do all sorts. Thank you. There we go. Now, you're supposed to paint them every time. I'm just gonna put a bit of butter on the top of these and we'll get them in. I'll show you what's going on inside that egg. Let's get rid of these. I'm gonna put a little bit of salt on them. It's salty butter anyway, but let's have a look what we've done behind us. Right. Gloves, we're done with those. Ooh, onions. Ooh. Onions. Hello. Mind oh. the pole, mind the pole, mind the pole. Yeah, we're good. Haven't burnt them. Look at those, they're perfect. Oh, lush. Right, we'll come back to those in just a second, Andy. Okay. This technique is working a dream. Right, well, it's a little bit warm. Anyway, you want this about 200 degrees. Now, what I've got up top, so this is the normal way of doing it. Hopefully this won't have stuck. A little bit. You can tell I didn't put the butter everywhere. But the idea is, you put it in a pan. Can you see these edge bits are all crispy and golden? I'm going to take this off now to finish it and it will gold, uh, crisp up the top. But that is just done in a pan. It's pushed down a little bit. But what we're going to do, I'm just going to move it back for a second. So I've got it on the expander system. But on the bottom here, we've got a normal baking stone. And I'm just going to put the part baking parchment directly on there. And the idea is that the pizza stone being hot, the baking stone will crisp up the bottom of those as they cook. That's what I'm going to try. Nice. So hopefully, 
what have we got? Yeah, 20 minutes, that should look pretty, pretty good. It's gonna take about an hour to cook to get the potatoes all cooked all the way through. So we'll go a bit back here. Right. So beautifully sauteed down. Time to start building this. I'm gonna be so early here. Right, we need to deglaze our pan a little bit. Oh, perfect. No. Oh, lid's on. <laughs> I thought this was a cork one. Sorry. I see. I didn't drink last. Oh, now that's, jeez. Little bit of red wine. Yeah, you can pass me the bottle. Oh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> you probably would as well, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. Right, a little bit of wine to deglaze that pan. We're trying to get the, the flour off the bottom, all the juices off the bottom. That's looking good. Oh, smelling good mm -hmm. too. Right, into there. I've got some celery and some carrots. So they're going to boil down as we go. I'm going to put in some... I haven't really put the potatoes in there. Um, I've got some stock. So as per Mark's recipe, we've got one beef stock. If I can open it. Cube, or well not cube, what do you call these stock pots? Stock pots. And one chicken. And I can tell you the one over there looks delicious. Oh, don't let me forget, I've got to do the... We'll get those in. We'll get those whizzed around a bit. Now we need a bit of water to add to it, so I'll get some from the tap. Yeah. Right. So we can go back in now with our lardons. Go back in with our venison. Get all those juices in as well. Mm. What I want to do is whiz this up. Now that stock will melt into them over time. We'll give it a stir as we go. And then I want to get some water in there to make it a stock. I'm just going to get enough to cover it for now. Get that a good mix together. So we've got red wine in there, we've got stock in there, we've got all our venison, we've got our lardons or our pancetta, our veg. It's going to be good. Right, now last thing. I've probably left these too late, haven't I? That yeah, will be good. Yeah, but they're going to have got time to cook. in here. Put that in there. We've got self-raising flour, some suet. I don't know if you can see the suet in there. I've got some rosemary chopped up, some parsley chopped up. So I'm just going to mix all of those together. And now, am I putting all of this in there? No, do it gradually. Gradually. Half of it. Just some water, I'm going to pull this together. A bit more. This is dumplings. Herby dumplings. Herby dumplings. <laughs> yeah. You can see I've left one of the ingredients out here on the table. Well, two of them for the stew, so we'll go back in a minute. If I pull this together. Now, this should be fairly dry, shouldn't it? Yes, it doesn't need to be sticky, it just needs to be able to pull it together. I'll put a little mm. bit more in there. I say that it's mama's dumpling recipe, do you know what I mean? Get her over here, get yeah. her on camera, right? Uh, her it's priorities not... are somewhat, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's, there she is, sipping away. Right, this is going to make eight dumplings. Let me grab my knife, Andy. Yeah. Bit 
flower, I may as well use this yes. one. Nothing wrong with that. Eight little dumplings. <laughs> What's going on now? So, um, I'd put on there, oh, so Lex is pleased you're making dumplings. Oh. And then, uh, Morning, Lexi. Um, it's my niece. Sarah said, pipe down, old woman. What, to her mum? Yeah. yeah. And then Big Green Egg in Wales has said, mum was right. You don't run any of your dumplings. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Family. Who'd have them on? Yeah. yeah. Good job for them. They're all running the show. Right. Show. There we go. Should have done these earlier. Now we've got 20 minutes, haven't we? Yeah. Right. So let's take our dumplings and we'll come back for oh, the last Oh, and you've bit. forgotten the other ingredients. What other ingredients? In oh, yeah, we'll stew. do those in a minute. Okay. That's all right. So in here, I'm covered, by the way. In here, sitting at 110 degrees, so nice, low and slow, we've got our stew. So it's quite dark. It's rich. Oh. It smells gorgeous. Um, so there's a couple of other ingredients to go in on the other one, but let's pop these all on top. Top's got two behind you. Yeah. Separate them out a little bit. Thank you. Oh man. One in the middle, look. And we'll give those another 20 minutes or so. Lush. Right, let me wash my hands. So any questions, Helena? Any jibes, any comments? Oh. <laughs> None that I need to know about. That's not good. Who is it? Sarah again. <laughs> uh, no, I've just asked if there are any questions. Uh, I'm just going to ask any. Um, so, um, yesterday was our last class of 2021. Uh, it was a great class to finish on. Really good fun. Had two, well, every group's lovely, but really good, really good this week, last couple of weeks. Um, Sally, I have um, forgotten to send back your hat. I will do it from the week before. Um, I have got the address, I've got everything I need. I've just got to do it. Um, so yeah, um, we will be launching 2022 classes. Um, I need to come around in dark swap. How long will it sustain that heat, please? Depends on how much charcoal you put in there, but if you fill it up with a basket long enough that you'll be sick of pizza. Uh, no, uh, hour, hour and a half, something like that. Should be fine, yeah. Okay, any other questions? Uh, so Josh has asked, do you need a little egg to cook this? No, but if you want one, I know a man who can sort it out for you. Um, yeah, we can, uh, anything Big Green Egg, of course, come see us. Anything over 70 quid, we can source everything. Um, anything over 70 quid's free delivery. Uh, might even be able to do, uh, you know, make it attractive. It's always attractive from Meat Smoke Fire. There you go. Yeah. Right. That was a bit, ugh, yeah. wasn't it? Ugh. Ugh. Right. Right. The, the ingredients I've forgotten. Um, porcini, mushrooms. Ooh. I've soaked these in water. Here's the water. So we may as well use that because it is delicious. Now, hopefully they're clean, it's not full of sand. So we're gonna put some of this in there because that is just rich mushroom stock. I'll keep the last bit back. Um, we're gonna go in with those porcini in there. And I shouldn't do it with that spoon, but I'm going to because I haven't got another one. I'll do it with the back end of it. Um, we haven't got um what's the other jelly oh cranberry uh, no, red, red, red currant so we're just going cherry oh cherry jam. nice that'd be lovely sweet, sweet. so a good dollop of cherry jam to sweeten it that's why the wasps spin around put the lid on that and the other thing i forgot the tomato puree which isn't coming from the middle of the tube because oh. it's the end which is rude and i didn't fry it off but it would still be gorgeous so we'll get that in there about a tablespoon 
and then we'll give that a good stir and some salt and pepper will go in oh it smells lush already i know and that needs a good two and a bit hours of cooking now when you're done with it um mark suggests putting in some chestnuts mm, cooked chestnuts not a fan yeah, you'll have to Pick push them, them to the side because um, <laughs> I've already put them in that one. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> so, uh, Ash. Mm. Oh, yeah. Morning, Ash. Huh? As just said, are you doing a Christmas cook? Yes. Oh. Would you not hear about no, five minutes? No, 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 it's just joy. Oh. Sorry, I'm just eating chestnuts. Yes, we're doing a Christmas cook in two weeks, Ash. And uh, Sarah's asked if you can make a guest appearance. Sarah, you can run the show. Oh, my ass, no. Oh, sorry. <laughs> She will be here that day, so uh, that's why we do. We've got family all coming over that day, so we're doing the Christmas. Oh no! On the we are only we only have forty five minutes. Last time you you get you guys are in the kitchen yeah. for like four hours. Anyway, right? Should we have a look? How are we doing on time? Fifteen minutes. Um, so, oh, found another ingredient I've forgotten. <laughs> oh oh man! This. Italian herbs. Oh. Now, this isn't the Mark's recipe, but this is definitely in mine. He puts in thyme, uh, nutmeg, uh, and so on. I just use Italian mm -hmm. herbs. Mm -hmm. It's a good dollop of Italian herbs. And they'll go through. Oh, ho, ho, I can't wait for this. Right, put the lid back on that. Shall we have a look at some of the other things or should we wait a little bit? Any questions or any comments? <clears throat> um, turn back. No, don't we'll have a look at our pomano then. Okay. okay. So sitting at 200 exactly. The top is now crisping up nicely, getting a bit of colour. If I get my knife, we should be able to just push it through that without scratching my. Oh yeah, that's nicely and nice and soft. Oh yeah. That's going to be good. I'm going to give that five minutes more. The ones below, look. Oh, let's do this. Oh, let's push it back. This yeah. is working a treat. Oh, Can you see them there. bubbling away? They're going to be good too. So that technique's going to work as well. Oh, I'll better put that back before I knock it off. We haven't served it yet. Let's go and have a look at our beetroot. Okay. So yeah, what would you like to see with your um, uh, turkey and bits, trimmings? Uh, so someone else, sorry, another question. Uh, no need for the lid on the Dutch oven? No need for the lid. You want to get some of that smoke in there. Now I've not put any wood chips or chunks onto the charcoal, uh, but if you wanted to make it really rich, you could use a chunk of wood and put it directly in the, uh, uh, put it onto the fire, and that would smoke at the same time. We do that with chilies and, spaghetti bolognese and so on. I haven't done it for, for this because venison's rich, red wine's rich, everything we put in there is rich. So I've kept it, that out for now. Um, I'm just going to get that knife and we'll slice that and have a look at our beach room. See how done it is. Now don't worry about, it's had most of the cook like this so it'll be fine. Just be careful when you do this. Oh yeah, they're soft. Oh. They're beautifully soft. I don't know if you can see that. So these are all sitting with all this balsamic in the bottom. So they're ready to come off. They're going to be good. Oh, they're my fave. Mm -hmm. So we've got those, we've got the pomana and our dumplings, which are probably going to be another 10 minutes, aren't they? 15. Oh, yeah, yeah. Should have put them on earlier. Well, we might take a photo afterwards. Um, but we'll get the pomana and the other bits out, shall we? Have a look clean this board a little bit. Right, so I want to serve this poor man. And then we'll, we'll take a photo of the dumplings afterwards. Oh, I'm going to put the chestnuts in, Andy. Oh, okay. If we we'll have to. save them for the other one. No, it's fine. Now you could chop these up. I'm just going to drop them in around my dumplings. Oh, there's 
already some in there as well. She's going to hate it. <laughs> I'm going to turn this up because now I think we want those dumplings to cook a bit faster. So I'm going to turn this up to 180, get it cooking a little bit faster for that last little bit. These dumplings will need a bit more heat than that, won't they? Right, let's get our pomander out and turn it out onto a plate and have a look. Okay. So, grab a plate. I'm going to grab my gloves because this is hot. Take our one off the top. Now this is the T Fowl Ingenio set, so no handle on there. Pop this down. Put our plate over the top. Pray. It's a bit like tart to tan. Those of you who've been on our cooking classes, we do a tart to tan, <clears> and <throat> it's exactly like that. Tip it over. Hope it's. No, I'm sure Paul White's just joined. That he'll be hoping that that He's joined. Just. Oh, oh look oh, at Paul that. Oh, Paul White. Mm -mm. So beautiful and crispy. We're going to do it into slices. But for now, we'll just put that over there, ready. Put that on there. We're going to get some of those. Those uh, beetroot. I'm going to put these in a bowl. So, um, that one's, you see that one's puffing up as well? Oh yeah. Beautiful. So there's a beetroot with chilli and balsamic. They're going to be nice and gorgeous. Can you use that other one? Because you're going to use that for casserole, aren't you? Okay. Yes, miss. I'll use the dirty one. That's what I'm saying. I'm just trying to save washing up. <laughs> I'm joking. You have got to try these. Get those out. They've got chili all over them. They've got balsamic over them. Drizzle the rest of it over the top. They are good. Now, if you wanted, you could put a bit of black pepper on them. You could have put some uh, a bit of cumin with them, but we like them just like that. So, pomana. Beetroot with balsamic and chilli and our stew and dumplings, which I should have done earlier. Why didn't I think of that? Right, let's have a look at this one. Can you see, sitting at, by chance, 110 degrees, exactly where I want it to be. Um, Dutch oven in there. Looking good. Now, you might need to turn it down a little bit on the egg um, on the lit on the mini max because um, it will be reading 110 up here but the bottom is right on the charcoal so I'm going to turn it down even more um, just so we don't burn the bottom of that but it is working great little technique let's take one more look at this yeah. oh. and then we'll take photos of everything later so last one Need a bit more heat for our dumplings, but I've just turned it up. So we'll get those going and we'll take some photos when they're done. Lunch is looking good. Mm -hmm. Smelling good. Right, let me grab the thing. Any requests? Uh, oh, I'm going to have to cut that in a second. Look at that. Look at that pomana. I'm going to cut it because it's supposed to go crunch. Where's my knife? Uh, oh, by the... Right, right, let me just give it a wash. Oh, hello, you should take a photo of that pomana. Where's your phone? Here. Get a quick, let me borrow your phone, I'll take a photo. Sorry, need it for social media. <laughs> so I'm gonna take a quick photo, this is great. We've got another phone now and a decent uh, picture. Uh, camera so we'll get that that can go up on the recipe and then I'm going to cut it right beautiful so any requests for next week not yet Christmas is a week after big slice 
Christmas on the 13th of November, as it always is every year. Yes. Mm. Oh, I've left a bit on the corner. So, mm. do another cup for a bit. Oh, these are good. I think we did a tortilla on one of the cooks. Okay. We're not doing Spanish again. It rains every time we do Spanish. Oh, well, I, I just said mentioned your croquettes and someone. Oh said yeah, we'll do those, those croquettes last. We'll do those next week. So maybe we'll do those with the patatas bravas. So you can guarantee next Saturday it's going to rain. Andrea's not here on the camera. It's going to be mm. awesome. Anyway, so pomana. Mm. These are good. Let me just check them. Should have brought a fork, shouldn't I? Uh, someone has bonkenko. Oh, yes. Suggested traditional Scottish stovies. Don't actually know what they are, but okay. Oh. That's good. <laughs> really good. Stovies, okay. So we'll have a look at that. I don't know what a stovey is. No, I'm just no, I've, I've heard of them. I've heard of it, but I don't know what it is, but we'll work that out. Thank you, Bonk and Co. Um big green egg dealer up in Inverness. I've got that right. Inverness right. Yeah. Oh meat and potatoes. Oh meat and potatoes, okay. So we'll have a look. Perfect. Alright, I'm gonna call it. We'll take some photos of the um, stew when it's finished. I'll let you know how we get on with holding the temperature at 110 with the mini max. And I'll pick up all the paper towels that are flying around. It's windy. Um, let us know. Well, I'll, I'll look back and see how the sound went. And we will see you next Saturday for croquetas, patatas bravas, and traditional Spanish stovies. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll see um, so thank you for watching we'll see you next week of course anything you are, need big green egg wise just give us a shout um, I'm doing an install on Wednesday with um, Kamado Island new customer with a Kamado Island and a big green egg so excited about that going to go and put that in um, the deal is still going for the Kamado Islands that you get a free cover when you buy uh uh, Kamado Space Island, Infinite Island, uh, but only until the 1st, so I guess that's Monday. Mm. So if you contact me today or tomorrow, if you want one of those, then uh, you get a free cover with it. Um, yeah. Prices will change on everything, I guess, going forward because of shipping. Oh, I should say, uh, we do have a few Kamado rings left, but there will be no more before Christmas. Uh, we've got more... Um, you mean tandoor rings tandoor rings sorry yeah going nuts more tan uh, so there will be no more tandoor rings before christmas so whatever it says on the website <clears throat> is however many they're in stock so if you're trying to buy one for somebody for christmas do it because um, i'm not getting any more i will have one more delivery of uh the let's Q rotisseries hopefully they've been shipped but it's probably been, the last lot took five weeks um just to get across from, I mean, they do, they do 30 miles in Holland and about 60 miles at this end, and that's it. But it takes five weeks. Um, everything is so messed up. Um, but those will be the last ones again before Christmas, just because they won't, you know, you just won't get any more through customs. So don't leave it until last minute if you want to buy one of those things. Anyway, we'll leave you to it. Um, thank you for watching, and we will see you next week. <laughs>